Good everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we have the anniversary sale overview where I cover all of the vehicles that I've gotten and of course the vehicle, the 10 rare vehicles event and we'll be covering that as well. So everything you see in this video, bar the boat, will be getting a review. Now one of the things I'd like to mention is I already have some of the vehicles that were in the 10 rare vehicles event. So if you don't see them in this video, chances are I've already reviewed them. In fact, I have, but you get my point. So, we're going to start off with one of the vehicles that I got in the sale, which is the M4A5 Ram. This vehicle's been on my radar for a little while, because no matter how hard it seems, a Panzer IV, when I'm playing a Panzer IV, I'll always run into one of these damn things. And they're a tough nut to crack. I do know where to shoot them, but that's the thing. Like, not everyone does. And you'll be surprised how many times people get killed by this tank because it's just quite trollish with its armor. I'm obviously not going to cover the armor too much because I want to save that for the, re for the review, sorry. But as you can tell, 88.9 slope back at 60, with obviously this part being quite weak, which is what you're going to have to watch. But I'm looking forward to getting my hands on this thing and properly giving it a good round. Now, one thing I'd like to mention is this is completely unbiased. I have not played any of the vehicles except the M8 LAC, which is technically in China. Um, all of the vehicles that you're going to be seeing in this section, or in this video, have not been played once. Just thought I'd mention that. Next up, we have one of the vehicles from the 10-year anniversary event, the XF5F. This has been on my radar for a long time. We've always nicknamed it the Baby Skyrocket, and that is no exception. Now, obviously, it will not be as good as a um, XP-50, so bear that in mind. But it is the lowest BR aircraft with a rank 3 on it, which is rank 3 2.3. It's like I'm back in the P3 Peshka days. But yes, you could potentially face gladiators whilst doing your rank 3 tasks, which is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. But I'm certainly looking forward to this thing. It doesn't get an interceptor spawn, even though it should, in my personal opinion, even though that would probably make it a bit busted, but, you know, it would give it a reason to go up in BR and then actually stay at rank 3, because I think this thing should go down to rank 2, but, you know. Um, again, haven't flown it, but it I can't wait for to get my hands on this thing. I've seen quite a few of them already. They've been nice, easy pickings because the players don't know what to do on them. So hopefully I should be able to teach them a thing or two. Next up, we have the American M8 LAC. It's ironic because I've just finished the match to get the last vehicle, which you're going to see in Russia. Um, and I strafed out about a decent amount of these. So, yeah. But, obviously, we've already had this vehicle in China, so... This will just get you standard premium review, and obviously a more in-depth review will be obviously the Chinese one. Um, I'll obviously link that when that comes out and everything. But, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Obviously, I've been wanting the American MA LEC for a while now, but I missed out on the event. And, well, the only time I could play it was in China. So, I thought, you know what, I'll play China, and really enjoyed it and now i get a premium one in the american tech tree so this ought to be fun because i can pair it with some m2 stewards and go seal clubbing you didn't hear that did you <laughs> okay on to the next vehicle we have the j87 r2 libya i did say i was getting this thing um obviously this vehicle is part of the german starter pack so i will be reviewing this and then i can hopefully put them together um, it's exactly the same as a regular R2. It's literally just a skin, which, to be fair, I quite like this. It's quite a nice little skin. Um, but yeah, nothing really to speak about here. It's just one of those things, you know. Next up, we have the Panzer 3N. Obviously, at the minute, it's got the Os Ketten on, but I'm going to... Well, the Winter Ketten, sorry. But I'll take that off just so you can see the side skirts and everything, because Mike Goes Boom might like it in that way. But this vehicle is essentially a Panzer 3M with a short 75mm put onto it. So it's the same 75mm as what you find on the Panzer 4 F1. Which you might think is bad, but this thing does get the additional hull armor. So, yeah. 
Unfortunately, though, you trade the turret armor, which, well, the additional turret armor, that is. So, this could be a problem, but I'm sure we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, when it comes to reviewing this little guy. But, again, it's been on my radar for a while, so, yeah. And now we move on to this thing. Now, I know what some people are thinking. Why the fuck did Joe buy the German KV-2? Well, it was either this or the Churchill, and I wanted something more meme-ish. Obviously, the Churchill's a good tank, but... Um, yeah, Joe wanted to see how the KV-2's gonna do, so, yeah, this, this might be a painful review when it comes to it, but I'm looking forward to it because, well, if there's one thing that's satisfying in this world, it's pulling the trigger on a 152 and watching something detonate in half, but, you know, we've gotta enjoy some things in life, right? That's how I see it. But obviously, the main difference between the German KV-2 and the Russian Tech Tree one is this one has the 1940 turret. Now, there was a event to get the 1940 turret in Russia, and then not long after that, the German KV-2... Well, in fact, no, I think they came at the same time, if I remember rightly. Um, but yeah, I was, I was probably going to get this over the Churchill just for the pure meme value, and I'm not being funny, right? If someone says they don't enjoy a KV-2 then they need they need their brain checking, let's put it that way. Moving on to Russia, we have the T-34-57-1943. This vehicle is, again, it's been on my radar a while, but it's certainly one that I'm looking forward to because it takes one of my favourite anti-tank guns, the 57 Zis, and plonks it on a updated T-34 hull, really, because obviously this is a 19... Well, it's got the 1942 turret. And the 1942 hull, so it's not it's not as prone to weak spots and everything. But of course, it's going to be quite fun in that regard. Um, as a little note as well, you won't be seeing any of the vehicles from the battle pass, and there's a cameo appearance by one of the um, the inflatable Shermans there. But um, you won't be seeing anything from the battle pass in this video. Um, I'm very close to the Churchill, as you can tell, or the Churchill crocodile, as you can tell. Well, no, it's a 15 days of premium, then it's the Churchill Crocodile, and then it's the A1H, but you get what I mean. Um, again, when there's an eventually a Battle Pass series video format that I do, um, you'll see those vehicles there. But anyway, um, I'm looking forward to this thing, so let's hope it is as good as a lot of people tell me it is, because I see these things doing quite some work. Next, we have this part of shit. The YA5M. This will not take long, I can assure you. This sack of crap is one of the worst boats I've ever had the pleasure of sailing. Well, I say the pleasure. Pleasure is a word I would not use for this thing. It bounces up and down like some sort of lowrider. The guns on it don't hit too great. And the rockets can't shoot over these metal handrails. Which means if you've got something... That you're trying to shoot at and it's maybe a little bit lower than you maybe it's a really small boat uh good luck shooting at it because only the disco can shoot at it and if this guy's over here he's gonna have to swing that sucker around so yeah this thing is terrible it's already gathered some local coral sea life and if, i mean if you look at the bottom it's already starting to gather the coral but no doubt there'll be a, a sea lion sleeping on the deck at some point so if you're lucky in the hangar or something you might catch one having a nap Next up, we have the I-29, another one from the Rare Vehicles, and, well, I don't really need to give this thing much introduction, do I? The amount of times that I've seen Harry clapping in this thing, and then he wonders why people run away from him in it, um, I think people are going to have the fear of God put into them when I come over in this thing. But it's a essentially a Yak-2 with an interceptor spawn, I believe it has better engines, it's a little bit lighter, and, well, yeah, fun little tidbit, this hinge here was meant to come out. You could either have a Bombay, a Gunner, or I think you said, like, an Observer, Harry did, for, like, um, reconnaissance roles. So, would be nice if we had that sort of module, you know, and keep the other guns. I mean, we'd probably lose the 20s if we had the Bombay, but you get my point. I mean, it's just something that would add a bit more to this vehicle, but, yeah... I've seen a few of these things, and so far the pilots, again, don't know what to do with them, because that seems to be the case. Next up, we have the Lag 323. This one was pleasantly surprising to see in the event, because I forgot this thing existed. The last time this vehicle was given out was 2014. 
And that was about the last time I really heard from this thing, because I've never seen one of these things. I've not seen one yet, so clearly people are still grinding for it, because, as I said, it's from November the 3rd as I record this video. But I haven't really done any flight testing with it, but it appears to just be the same as the LAG 311. And ordnance-wise, well, it's exactly the same as well. So I'm not exactly expecting a huge amount, but it's something that people want to see reviewed. And not only that, it's one of those vehicles that, um, yeah, it's it's certainly rare. Let's put it that way. It's obviously lost a bit of its rarity now that it's in this event, but you get my point. Moving on to Britain, we only have one acquisition from the sale, and that is the Thunderbolt Mark I. Originally, the plan was to get this thing in war bonds back when I got the Papelswagen, but unfortunately, I took my break back then, so I never got the chance to get this thing, which was a bit unfortunate. But, when I say unfortunate, with the amount of tanker trash I've seen flying these damn things, I mean, clearly I'm going to have to show them how it's done, because unlike the other P-47s, this gets the bigger prop, so we will be climbing it be uh, well, a bit better, so that's at least something. But, generally speaking... This probably won't be a positive review, because all I'm going to say to you is, if you want something that is a fighter as well as ground powder, just get the bloody Hellcat. And if you want something that's a pure fighter, just grab the Mustang. It's not going to hurt you. Next up, we have an aircraft that I have wanted in my hangar for a very long time, the DB-7. This is essentially a A-20 Havoc with French guns put in it. Now, no offense to... um. Are concealed, but the guns, from what I've seen people using them, they're a bit shit, but to be fair, it's French, so, you know. And that is a joke, by the way, if anyone else is French, it's common decency for a Brit to take a dig at French, but, you know. I would like to see one of these added to the French tech tree at some point, like, maybe as a, a premium or something, because, like, before this event, you never saw these things. I think giving one to France would not only make sense, but you gave him a D520 when that tech tree came out. Why not give him a DB7 and maybe the D521 if we're lucky? But, you know, I doubt they're going to do that. Moving on to Japan, we only have one vehicle here, which is the H8K3. It's a H8K. I mean, I don't know why this thing went up in BR, but, you know. It's just one of those vehicles that it's a seaplane, so it automatically gets a pass in my book. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to reviewing this thing, although... Why it's so expensive? I mean, 1150G for this sucker. Like, Jesus. But, I don't know. I guess we'll find out how it's worth that much when I get my hands on it and start playing with it. Moving on to China, we have the Chinese D510C. This is essentially a copy of Palio's D510 with a Chinese skin. This has been in the files for quite a while now, and um, a lot of people were expecting it to come as a tech tree vehicle from what I saw. But, no, they threw it in as a premium. And, well, I mean, I can't say I blame them, but it's definitely not one that I would have chosen for a premium. The reason for that is because we already had the Hawk 3. You could have probably plonked this, I don't know, like, before the I-16s, like, maybe. I, that's where I'd have plonked it, but... Apparently Gaijin does In fact, no, I'd do you one better. Plonk it before the CW. But, you know... Guys, you don't seem to think about that sort of thing, but I'm looking forward to it because I enjoyed Spain, well, reviewing Palio's D510. So I'll certainly be looking forward to reviewing this little guy. Next up, we're moving on to a couple more tanks. We have the M3A3 First PTG. I can't remember. I think it's, um. Oh, what's the PTG sound for? I can't remember off the top of my head. If I, I, I honestly can't remember off the top of my head. I've had that much grinding to do. My brain has just pushed out most things which are unimportant. So, Harry will probably tell you in the comments below. Um, I think it's my, like people's tank guards or something like that. I honestly don't remember. But the M3A3 is the vehicle from the starter pack. Obviously, I haven't had a chance to... Well, I, I reviewed, obviously, the vehicle... Um, by using the tech tree Chinese one, so it's exactly the same, it's literally just premium modifiers. And well, it would be nice to have it reviewed, you know, and that way I don't get accused of like clickbait or something. Next up, we have the M4A4 First PTG. This is the only M4A4 in the game with a 50 cal, which annoys me because all of them have the pintle mount, but we're not going to talk about that. 
And um, yeah, this little vehicle is certainly one that is, well, it, it was very common when it first came out. Let's put it that way. I ran into so many of these damn things. And yeah, it wasn't always fun because the Sherman players tended to know what they were doing if they were buying this thing. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. Next up, we have the HE112B1U2. I actually had to rename my review because of this thing. Um, if you don't know, this thing used to be in the German tech tree, so yeah, I've had to change that. I've set that to the German one, and then once I review this thing, it will be titled in brackets as Italy. I know it says it's um, a Romanian bird, but I'm going to put it as Italy, and that way no one can complain. But it's exactly the same as the German one. It just got moved to this tech tree because Romania, Hungary, and a couple of others are probably going to be dumped into Italy, which, to be fair, helps Italy out quite a bit. So I have no problem with that. Moving on to France, we have another vehicle from the event, which is the D371HS9. What do I really need to say? I mean, it's... It's the one that I avoided, and if you remember Harry's infamous video on it, he was basically roasting my ass for asking him to fly it. But remember, Harry flies on ping, which is not as generous as mine. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands on this thing to properly give it a go, and hopefully I'll be able to show Harry just how much good ping makes a difference on this thing. And finally, we move on to Sweden, because, well, I'm not buying anything of fucking Israel. That's that's not like a dig at Israel, I just dislike the nation in the game at the minute, because it's just very boring, that's all. So obviously I did say that I was going to get this thing in the sale, obviously it was on my to-do list. But um, essentially what this thing is, is the Vickers Mark E, which, don't worry, the review for this thing and other vehicles are coming soon. I haven't even started on the 251 yet, which obviously by the time this video comes out, I'll have a decent portion, if not, it's done. But um, the Vickers Marquee and the other vehicles I mentioned, they are finished, it's just I haven't gotten around to them. And I was going to wait till the sale to get this thing anyway. But essentially it's a Vickers Mark E with a T26 turret, well, gun I should say, the, the turret's a little bit different, but... It's not a problem, to be fair, but essentially, I think I'm going to enjoy this thing because I enjoyed the Vickers Mark E, as you're going to see in its review, and I think I'm going to enjoy this thing because if you give me a Russian gun on a hull, which I'm very, very familiar with, which has a bit more mobility than the standard T26, I think I'm just going to do just fine. But anyway, that's it for today on the sale. I hope you enjoyed today's video on the sale, and well... Let me know what you think of my collection. Do you think I pick some good vehicles? Do you think I pick some stinkers? Or do you think that Joe's gonna suffer in maybe, I don't know, the D371 and you want to leave that in the comments or something? But essentially, that's it for today. Obviously, do expect these vehicles to be reviewed over time. Obviously, vehicles bought in the sale will come first because that just makes sense. If I happen to get the videos done for the D3, the um oh what is it the event vehicles from the 10 rare vehicles event if i happen to get some of those done first then i'll probably publish them will publish them but you get my point so just expect these reviews to come out over the coming weeks but anyway i'm going to go off and get cracking with that 251 because i haven't even started it yet which is kind of disappointing but also the as42 is done as well everything that i said apart from this thing and the 251 is done so, I'll probably do this thing first, and then, obviously, the rest of the stuff, but I'll just decide from time on. But anyway, I'm going to leave it, guys, to it. I hope you enjoyed today's video on the sale acquisitions, and I will see you all on the next one.